Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introduction. Yes, my name is Alexander Popov, and I will tell you how I met Fuchsia operating system. I'm a Linux kernel developer since 2013, and I'm security researcher at Positive Technologies. I gave talks at many security and developer conferences, and I'm really happy to be here at Nalcon and uh, share the results of my research with you. The plan of the talk. Um, first, I will give the overview what is Fuchsia operating system, and uh, about its, I will tell about its security architecture. I will show how to build this operating system, and I will tell about the Zircon microkernel, um, which is a part of Fuchsia. And then I will describe my exploit development experiments for the Zircon microkernel and show the exploit demo. Big plans, so let's go. Fuchsia. It is a general purpose uh, open source operating system. It was created in Google approximately six uh, years ago. And it is mainly developed for IoT, smartphones, PCs, so uh, the ecosystem of connected devices. And in December 2020, Google decided to open Fuchsia for contributors not only from Google. And uh, later, they officially released Fuchsia as an operating system of their Nest Hub device, which is the uh, device which controls smart home. And this operating system is under active de development, and security is one of the goals of uh, Fuchsia developers. And it is based on the microkernel. Uh, it is called Zircon. It is written in C++, and compared to the Linux kernel, which is a monolithic kernel, Circon implements less services. Um, it implements inter-process communication, memory management, scheduler, and process management, and other things like networking, file systems, device drivers are moved to the user space. Um, and I see several aspects in uh, future security architecture, which make this system an interesting target for the security research. And I want to tell about them. First of all, uh, what's interesting, Fuchsia doesn't have the concept of a user. Instead, it is a capability-based system. So the kernel resources are given to the applications which have the corresponding uh, capabilities. And the main idea is to have uh, um, to have list capabilities for each application to do the job. Uh, that is important for the security architecture because the concept of local privilege escalation, which we have for the Linux kernel, uh, doesn't work for Fuchsia because there is no root user. And uh, like in Linux kernel, we can execute the code as unprivileged user, exploit the vulnerability in the kernel, and uh, become root. Here, in Fuchsia, it doesn't work, and we need to find some other approach. Second interesting aspect, I already mentioned it. Fuchsia is based on the microkernel, and uh, it has smaller kernel attack surface compared to monolithic kernels. At the same time, Fuchsia developers don't have a goal to make it, uh, the Zircon really minimal, so uh, this uh, microkernel has over 170 system calls, quite a lot compared to other typical microkernels. So it is a complex uh, target. The third thing is that um, Fuchsia provides very rich sandboxing mechanisms for the applications. Applications in Fuchsia are called components, and each component run in uh, uh, um, separate sandbox and there is even no global file system in Fuchsia. So every application works in a local namespace, and all inter-process communication between the applications must be explicitly declared. So uh, obviously, this design decision makes uh, user space security better and isolates uh, components or applications from each other. At the same time, I think uh, this design decision makes Zircon microkernel very attractive goal t 
target for the attacker. The last very interesting aspect is that Fuse has very unusual scheme of software de delivery. Um, their components in the system are identified by URLs, and when you want to execute some application in the system, you specify this URL and the software is downloaded to the system on demand. So the idea here is to make software packages always up to date when you start them, just like uh, the web pages when you open it, you see the current contents. The same idea is here. And all these four uh, um, architecture decisions make Fuchsia a very interesting research target, uh, at least for me. Some, uh, some words how to build it. It is very easy. Uh, Fuchsia has a very good step-by-step -step, um, tutorial how to build it, and uh, it works uh, very well. And you even don't need a special hardware to run Fuchsia. You can uh, start it in the emulator, which is a fork of Android emulator. And uh, I also want to mention that Fuchsia supports only two uh, architectures, x86-64 and ARM-64. So um, you can uh, try it on these two architectures. Creating a component, uh, a toy component for the system is quite easy as well. Uh, there is a command uh, which creates a template for, for the application. And here, my toy application wants to print hello to the system log. And uh, to, to run it, I need to specify the manifest uh, uh, the, that this application wants to print, uh, print something to system logs. That's why I specified logging in the manifest of the application. So all the capabilities of the applications uh, must be explicitly declared. And building Fuchsia with uh, a new component to build it, uh, just, we just need to add a parameter to the build command. But running it uh, on the system is a bit more complex. It needs four steps and I will show it on this screenshot. In the first terminal, uh, we need to start the emulator. It is uh, terminal number one, this one. In the second terminal, we need to start the um, so-called package publishing server. It is the software which will provide Fuchsia um, the, the software packages. In the third uh, terminal, uh, I opened the system logs, and in the fourth terminal, I asked Fuchsia, please run my application with this URL. And, and then I got the uh, hello in the third terminal. So uh, because of this uh, software delivery scheme, it, is, it looks quite complex. It is for connected devices. Now about the microkernel. Circon microkernel, as I said, is written in C++. It is a part of Fuchsia, source code, and to develop uh, this uh, microkernel, you need to run this system uh, in the QM KVM. Debugging it, uh, very similar to the experience of debugging the Linux kernel, and you start QM um, with a single virtual CPU for better debugging experience, and uh, to do single stepping, I usually disable uh, KVM, hardware virtualization. Otherwise, on every single step, your debugger always gets into interrupt, uh, timer interrupt handler. So that's why if I need single stepping, I, I use this trick. And just attach uh, the GDB client to the GDB server, and it looks like that. Very similar to the Linux kernel debugging. In the first terminal, we have um, the QMO running with Fuchsia, and in the second terminal, we have GDB client connected to the GDB server in QMO. And uh, for every successful security search of C++ code, we need some detector uh, w which reveals the memory corruption bugs. And for C and C++, for the 
uh, operating system kernels, there is such detector. It is Kasan kernel address sanitizer. It can uh, detect out of bounds accesses, use after free memory corruptions in the runtime. And Fuchsia supports uh, building Zircon with, uh, with Kasan. Uh, you just need an extra argument for the build command. And I wanted to test it. Uh, to, to test kernel address sanitizer, I added a synthetic uh, Zircon bug uh, in the code which implements the kernel timers. Here, um, if I set, if the, the timer is set to the deadline which ending with uh, elite numbers, then when timer fire, uh, deadline uh, is met in timer fire, the memory of the object is, is freed regardless of the uh, reference counter. So it is a bug. And I wanted to hit this bug in my toy application to see how the memory corruption is detected. To do that, uh, I simply created a timer, set it to the deadline ending for the magic numbers, and waited when the timer is fired. And then when I called ZX timer cancel, uh, the microkernel uh, the referenced the freed memory, so it is use after free bug. And the kernel address sanitizer detected that. Uh, the Zircon kernel got panic, and I saw such a beautiful report in the kernel log. So nice. Uh, at this point, I understood that I have everything for successful uh, vulnerability, uh, for successful security research on this system. And I had a goal to develop a proof of concept exploit for some uh, Zircon bug. And uh, the simplest way to find such a bug in the, in the uh, kernel, operating system kernel, is fuzzing. And there is a great kernel fuzzer, which is coverage guided. Uh, it is called Syscaller. I like this project and people who uh, develop it very much. I use Syscaller for Linux kernel for many years. And I decided, uh, and Syscaller documentation says that it supports fuzzing fuchsia. So I uh, built a Zircon with a kernel address sanitizer and decided to uh, fuzz it. But unfortunately I got troubles uh, caused by this unusual software delivery scheme on, on fuchsia. Um, actually, for fuzzing fuchsia image must have the sys executor binary. It, is, uh, it should be a part of uh, fuzzing virtual machine and it actually executes the fuzzing input on the virtual machine. But I failed to build Fuchsia with this component. Uh, uh, then I, later I um, found out that Fuchsia was integrated with Syscaller once upon a time in 2020, but it was then broken and forgotten and so on. I put some effort uh, to reintegrate them, um, but uh, I failed without any success. And I found the contacts of the developers who uh, contributed to this functionality. I wrote them email describing technical details of the bug but didn't get any reply. Spending more time on future build system uh, was upsetting me. And at this point, I understood that I need to decide on further research strategy. It was a hard moment. Um, without fuzzing, Successfully, vulnerability discovery in operating system kernel requires, first, good knowledge of the code base, second, deep understanding of the attack surface. Obviously, I didn't have that uh, for Fuchsia because it was my first experience with this system. And uh, did I want to spend a lot of time to learn it uh, for this first research? Perhaps not. First, because uh, committing large resources to first familiarity with the system is not uh, really reasonable. And second, uh, Fuchsia um, appeared to be less production ready than I expected. So I was just like this night uh, standing in front of the stone where uh, various different bad options are listed, <laughs> uh, thinking what to, th what to choose. And I decided not to be greedy and postpone the zero-day discovery for Zircon and try to um, exploit this 
synthetic bug which I uh, created to um, test kernel address sanitizer. And ultimately it was a very good decision because first it gave me quite quick results and uh, second I found other interesting bugs in Circon along the way. So uh, now I will tell how I exploited this synthetic bug and what happened ne next. The exploit strategy for exploiting this use after free on timer dispatcher was quite simple. First, I needed heap spraying primitive to override the freed object with the controlled data. Then I needed to choose the data for this object to make zircon timer code work abnormally. In other words, I needed to turn the microkernel into a weird machine, which in parallel executes uh, the normal instruction in the code and in parallel uh, executes the actions which attackers controls. It is called, uh, this concept is called weird machine, I like it very much. So, uh, from uh, using this weird machine, I needed to get control over, uh, over the future OS. And the first uh, part was heap spraying. What is it? Um, heap spraying is such activity in the user space which made the kernel uh, which is uh, available for unprivileged uh, applications, which make the kernel allocate a new object at the place of the freed object. And this new object should contain the controlled data. Um, moreover, this data should come from the user space. And when the freed object with new data is used, uh, the kernel turns into this weird, mach weird machine. And from my ex exploit uh, development experience from the Linux kernel on you, that usually Linux kernel heap spraying uh, is based on the inter-process communication. Why? Uh, first of all, basic uh, IPC for Linux are available for unprivileged programs. Nice. Second, uh, some inter-process communication in Linux allow setting the data size for transfer, uh, and that gives the actual control over the allocator behavior. I can put the uh, new object at the place of the freed object. Moreover, IPC usually transfer data, so uh, it is good because the control data from the attacker's user space go to the freed object. That was the reasons why I started to learn Fuchsia IPC to find uh, the uh, heap spraying exploit primitive. And I found that. Uh, I found uh, Zircon v4. It is created uh, with ZX v4 create system call. And if I create several uh, v4 dispatchers at the needed, uh, with the needed size, one of them overrides my free timer dispatcher object. That is very good. Uh, I, I got the ability to change the timer dispatcher uh, contents with the control data. But which data should I use to, uh, to mount the further attack? To understand that, I started to learn the C++ object anatomy. I needed to understand how timer dispatcher um, is uh, organized inside. And compared to the Linux kernel ex experience, it was much more complicated. In uh, Linux, um, for the kernel object, we have C structures, and if the object has some method, it is a function pointer in a C structure. Very simple uh, and explicit. But for C++ object, their internal uh, anatomy is much more complex. I tried different tools to understand how this complex timer dispatcher is organized inside, but I failed and I decided I don't care. I decided not to care about it. And I uh, tried this I would call minesweeper approach, blind, blind practice instead. I filled the timer dispatcher with zero bytes and started to crush uh, and crush and crush the uh, Zircon microkernel with my proof of concept exploit. And uh, with the debugger, I uh, started to find which bytes in the heap spring I need to, uh, to set to proceed in the uh, microkernel in execution and avoid crashes. At, and at some point, I got a very promising Zircon crash. Uh, Zircon crashed in this C++ dark magic. Um, here, th uh, there is the getType public method, which is called for the timer dispatcher object. Uh, 
And uh, this public method is referenced with the C++ vtable. The pointer uh, to this virtual table is stored at the beginning of the object. And I got the null, po uh, null pointer dereference when this vtable was used by the microkernel. And uh, I thought that it is excellent for control flow hijacking. So very good kernel crash, very promising. But for control flow hijacking in the operating system kernel, I need to know the addresses of kernel symbols. But uh, we have the kernel address layout, uh, uh, kernel ad address space layout randomization, KSLR. It is the uh, security feature which makes the kernel be located at the random offset in the virtual memory on every boot. So uh, on every single boot, I uh, initially don't know where the kernel symbols are, loc are located. And I needed to bypass that somehow. I needed to know this KSLR offset, secret, se secret value, and I decided to try the trick which I used for one of my proof of concept exploits for the Linux kernel. I tried uh, in, in, that, um, in, in that research, I used the kernel log to extract the information which can reveal the KSLR offset. And uh, Fuchsia kernel log also has security sensitive information as well. And I decided to do this trick, same trick, but for Fuchsia this time. And uh, I uh, decided to try to open the kernel log from my exploit application in Fuchsia. Uh, for that, I specify this uh, string in the manifest, created a channel, connected to a special service in Fuchsia uh, with special protocol trying to open the kernel log, and I failed because uh, the access wasn't denied. Because obviously my component didn't have the required capabilities, so that's how Fuchsia um, capabilities really work. So that was correct behavior, no way. But I fun, uh, suddenly found the system call, which allows to get access to the kernel log, and it has the uh, parameter, uh, the argument, the resource, and to open the kernel log, I needed. Uh, ZX resource kind root, special resource which my application didn't have. But uh, mm, f just uh, to, to try my luck, I call this uh, system call with zero resource and somehow I managed to get the kernel log. But why? I started to look at the source code and uh, it was a hilarious security check in this code. Just look, uh, we call validate resource only if the resource is not invalid, so not null, not null. Uh, it is like at the passport control, we, you, you, you come and policeman says, okay, give me your passport uh, for the check. And you say, I don't have a passport. Uh, and the policeman re re replies, okay, just pass, it is fine. So this code uh, works like that. I uh, um, filled the security issue to Fuchsia bug tracker and the developers approved that it is a security issue. The, the, this code is, uh, is buggy, and they assigned the CVE for this issue. But anyway, um, reading the kernel log for Fuchsia was not a problem anymore. And in my POC exploit, I extracted some kernel pointers from the kernel log, and then I realized they somehow they are the same on the each boot. Turned out that <laughs> KSLR is mentioned in the kernel code but doesn't work uh, for Fuchsia. And uh, that was another security issue which I uh, filled in Fuchsia bug tracker and uh, the developers said, okay, we know this issue. It is fine, it is not ready yet. Um, anyway, I knew uh, at this point the, that I can, in my uh, exploit, for con uh, control flow hijack, I can use the point, uh, original pointers from the binary. And I started to look how the vtable is organized inside, how it works. 
That, that is what the debugger shows for the timer dispatcher virtual table. You can see here some values which definitely not kernel pointers. And uh, to understand how the kernel use it, uses uh, such values, I started to look at the code which it uses, but um, didn't, I didn't manage to understand anything from the C++ dark magic, so I just opened the assembly and it was <laughs> much more, much more simple and plain. Here, we can see that um, this value from the V table is sign extended uh, from 32-bit uh, uh, source to 64-bit destination and then added to the address of the V table. So it is some kind of upset. When they are added, uh, the, um, the uh, register starts to have the pointer of this type uh, get type um, public method of the timer dispatcher. So in my exploit, I needed to reverse this logic to, uh, to make kernel execute my uh, function, which I want. And then, uh, at this point, I started to think where to put this uh, fake V table. Uh, the, the most simple answer is to put it in my user space, address space, of the exploit, but Zircon on x86-64 supports SMAP, which is uh, Supervisor Mode Access Prevention. It is a hardware feature which protects from dereferencing the user space pointer from the kernel space. So um, placing the v fake vtable in the user space was not possible with this feature. Uh, for the Linux kernel, I usually bypass uh, SMAP by placing the payload in the kernel space at some uh, known address where my user space contents uh, uh, data are placed. And I could do the same for the Fuchsia or I could use, uh, re-implement the red to deer attack because Fuchsia, like the Linux kernel, has so-called map mapping. But for this first time I decided, okay, it is too complex for the first research. I, I just disabled SMAP and SMEP in Cuemo. And uh, for this experiment I placed the fake vtable in the user space. And implemented this um, logic which I showed you in the kernel. Here, um, for the vtable um, uh, value, I subtracted the vtable pointer from the uh, function pointer address of the function which I want to uh, the kernel to call. It is my pawn function from the uh, exploit. So I've subtracted the vtable pointer and when the kernel implements the vtable handle logic, it, uh, add, uh, it adds the vtable pointer to this value and uh, then calls my pawn function just like I want for control for hijack. Nice. So at this point, I achieved the ability to, uh, to do code execution in the microkernel. But what, what should I do to get um, the control over the system? Um, my first so thought uh, was to create this fake resource, which I already mentioned, special uh, superpower resource, but um, actually Zircon doesn't use it uh, that much in the source code, so I didn't manage to do anything uh, useful with this resource. And I understood the very important point uh, about the microkernel security, that to, uh, to, to make privilege escalation you, in the microkernel, you need to attack the inter-process communication, because there is no uh, some mm, super user um, entity in the microkernel uh, in Fuchsia. So I uh, returned to learning about Fuchsia user space and it was uh, uh, messy and boring, I'm a kernel developer. But suddenly I got the idea. And what about planting a rootkit into the microkernel? It's much more interesting than the user space. I start to learn um, how syscalls are implemented in Fuchsia. And uh, like uh, in the Linux kernel, Zircon has the syscall table. 
It is uh, the, uh, the part of the memory which stores the function pointers to the syscall handlers, and there is a x86 syscall function which jumps to the, uh, to the handler corresponding to the syscall number. So very similar uh, to the Linux kernel syscall uh, implementation. And I tried to overwrite this syscall table with a very old school classics um, trick. So I reset the write protect bit from the CR0 register, which allowed me to write any memory in the system. And I overwritten the syscall table and it worked. So uh, I had everything for planting a rootkit in the microkernel, and I started to think how to implement uh, the rootkit hook. Um, usually in Linux kernel rootkits, it is not a problem um, because the Linux kernel rootkit is usually a kernel module, so you can just use the function in this kernel module as a hook, and it is simple. But here for Fuchsia, I was planting rootkit from the user space, and I was not... Um, able to use the user space functions at, as hooks um, for my rootkit. And I got the idea to turn a part of Zircon code in, into the hook. And uh, my first candidate uh, for overwriting was this function assert fail message. Yeah, these functions drove me nuts during the exploit development because so many um, assertions are uh, around in the um, in uh, Zircon microkernel, and I was very happy to override this function. Um, first, I, I want to tell about the hook. Uh, I wanted to simply print a message into the kernel log. So in my hook, uh, which uh, works instead of the system, should work instead of the system call, first, uh, you can see in blue, um, I save the registers, push it onto the kernel stack. Then I prepare the uh, zircon printf call, call it. And uh, here you can see that I prepared the string which I want to print uh, and put it just after the my hook code, plus one byte. Remember this one byte, I will tell you uh, why it is here very soon. Then I uh, restore the state of the register and call the original system call. I wanted to uh, hook the process create system call. Very interesting uh, syscall in the future. And that is how I planted the rootkit. Um, remember about this one byte? It is how I uh, disabled the assertions in Fuchsia. I, uh, first of all, wrote C3 value at the first byte of this function. Uh, this th C3 means return. So any further assertion in Zircon just returns immediately. After this uh, read instruction, I uh, copied the code of my hook, which I just showed you. And then after the hook, I copied the message which I wanted to print to the kernel log. Rootkit hook, syscall number 102, process create. So on every call to process create, Fuchsia will print this message to the kernel log. And uh, finally, to plant the rootkit, I overwrote the item number uh, 102 in the syscall table. And this uh, item should point to our overwritten function plus one byte. So at the beginning of my hook code. And now I will show the exploit demo, how it worked. Okay. Here you can see that I started the log listener, which will show that I executed the exploit. The exploit is executed and rootkit is planted. Yeah. Now, in Fuchsia, uh, I... Uh, whoa, sorry. Yeah, I will set it. There. 
Yeah. Um, now, after after the rootkit worked, I set I, I um, call the uname command, which will show that it is the zircon kernel, and this uname triggered my hooks of the rootkit. Now I will show that in the log. Oh, strange. Sorry. Yeah, grab for rootkit. And we see that the uname command provoked two rootkit hooks and it worked. Now the conclusion. That is how I met the Fuchsia operating system and its zircon microkernel. That was very interesting uh, because uh, I'm a Linux kernel hacker and this microkernel was a very new experience, uh, experience for me. And I wanted tr to try my kernel hacking skills against uh, this system for a long time. I'm glad that I uh, had this opportunity. And uh, I followed the responsible disclosure process for the discovered security issues. And uh, I believe it is one of the first public researches on Fuchs, uh, Fuchsia operating system security. And I think it is valuable because this work shows some practical aspects of microkernel vulnerability exploitation and defense. And I really hope that this will inspire you um, to do some kernel hacking. And of course, I wish you a good conference and friendly conversations. Uh, uh, any questions? Uh, could you uh, use the mic? Um, uh, the, the question is about the GDB for Fuchsia. So, uh, GDB client is attached to the GDB server, which is provided by QEMO. QEMO, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't need KDB over there. No, I, I need. I don't need anything in the kernel, zircon uh, kernel, to have it debugged. Yes. Okay, okay. It is provided just by QEMO, and nothing is needed in the zircon microkernel. Okay. So. Uh, uh, had you tried putting, uh, calling uh, your fake uh, V table from C -tor Could or you v -tor? speak in the mic? Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, have you thought of uh, calling your fake V table uh, from C -tor or D -tor function? Uh, sorry, could you repeat, please? So, did you try calling the your fake V table that mm -hmm. you wanted to invoke from C -tor or D -tor? Uh, You mean from the debugger or no, what? from the C -tor or D -tor function? So, whenever the function is being allocated, you have C -tor just to lay the space for the mm -hmm. function mm -hmm. or detour which cleans up. It's like allocator and uh, uh, destructor, um, so just in that. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question uh, really, but I will um, repeat about the vtable trick. So um, the virtual table is at the beginning of the, uh, the time at a special object. And I overrode the object and I created a fake vtable for that. And uh, this vtable was placed in the user space. So I had uh, the object with a pointer to the user space. And uh, this, in this fake the table, I created the address to my user space function, which I want the kernel to call, my shell code. So the v table, fake v the idea of fake table was to make the kernel to call my shell code from the user space. Yes. Uh, Sorry, I um, can't comment on that. Uh, maybe we'll uh, check it later. Yeah, okay. Anyone well, from this room? While you are thinking about the questions, I will show you bonus slides. What happened next? I have a couple of minutes for that. Yep. Uh, so, uh, in May, this year, I published the article, and uh, 
sometime after that, Fuchsia Security Engineering Manager from Google approached me and asked for a call with uh, Google. And it was a very interesting conversation with them. Um, they thanked for this research and I asked a lot of questions about Fuchsia Security Architecture. And what I really liked, um, Fuchsia Security Engineering Manager told that he would attack Zircon the same way as I did, but at the last step he would attack the capability transfer or uh, try to achieve the persistence across reboots, so changing the kernel image and save uh, the attack activity after the reboot, rebooting the system. <laughs> it was funny, they made the call recording, but later they refused to share it with me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Strange. Um, then later in August, Fuchsia developers contacted me and said that the Syscaller integration that was previously broken is fixed. So now you can search for vulnerabilities in Fuchsia. Moreover, later, uh, several days ago, Google, uh, Google announced uh, an open source software vulnerability rewards program. So they, play, uh, they pay bounty for the vulnerabilities discovered in the open source and reported. And Fuchsia operating system is in scope. So now it is even more interesting target for the research. Yeah, maybe, maybe questions? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, again, wish you a uh, great conference. Thank you.